I've got a very interesting watch on the channel today. It's from Phoebus. It's called the Vortex. It's caught my attention. And the reason I say that is because it's got quite a few features that are very interesting. Looking at the case back of this watch, you can see that it's machined, but removing the case back, underneath that, there's another screw down case back. And that is a Faraday cage made out of iron. And the reason for that is to offer some form of protection to the movement against magnetism. And unscrewing that Faraday cage and removing it reveals a Salida SW200. So the rear of the watch is very nice. I like what they've done. But the front of the watch is even more interesting. You notice you've got a couple of oversized crowns. They're 7.8 millimeters. They're both screw down. They offer 200 meters of water resistance. And there's an inner rotating bezel that's fully loomed. And the watch also features a two layer dial that features sandblasting and embossed rings, as well as a second layer having matte black grain with printed logo and text. Simple automatic 200 meters. But even turning the watch to its side, <laughs> that is pretty cool. I love what I'm seeing here. This is different. I like different. I like it when watch manufacturers make something different. We can't reinvent the wheel, that's a given. But when they add their certain flair and unique touch to a particular watch, that gets my attention. Now don't get me wrong, this watch is far from perfect. There's a couple of things that I would like to see change and I'll mention all those. But overall, gee, a really cool, unique piece. I can actually see and feel the step up in quality, not only from that movement, but also from the machine parts, the finishing on this case, the quality feel of those crowns, pretty impressed. Now full disclosure, the watch has been sent out to the channel. I don't have to send it back. However, Phoebus has zero input into this review. Now I measure a case diameter of 43 and a half millimeters with a case height of exactly 13.1. The lug to lug is fantastic at 37.5 with a lug width of 22 mil. Now I spoke about those crowns. They're both oversized 7.8 millimeters screw down and they offer 200 meters of water resistance and the total weight on this rubber strap comes in at exactly 125 grams. Now being a 43 and a half mil case diameter, you're probably thinking that's pretty big. Well, it's no different to my Seiko Marine Master. So for me, I'm used to having a watch like this. I don't mind a watch that has these dimensions. And even the case height, again, I'm used to wearing watches of this caliber. And what I especially like about what they've done with this design is that the lugs are internal. I measure a lug to lug distance of 37.5. So this watch can cater for very small wrists as well as the bigger wrist because that rubber strap will follow the contour of a larger wrist. But they've also supplied the watch on a leather strap. So there's a couple of different choices. I think the leather needs a bit of a breaking period, two, three days. It's a little bit firm, but it looks to be made of real good quality. Now here's where the fun begins, these crowns. You see, you've got two crowns. I'll unscrew the top one. As you can see, it released the inner bezel. And that inner bezel is a rotating bi-directional, so it goes right and left, free spinning, there's no ratcheting system, so it's, it's free to go wherever it wants. And the way to lock it in at a position, very simple, as soon as you press that in, it's not moving anywhere. So as you can see, it doesn't move anywhere. As soon as you release, it engages the actual mechanism. So we move it to wherever we want, we lock it in, screw it down, lock it in, and you've got 200 meters of water resistance and the bezel, handset, and markers are loomed. And speaking of that loom, it's 15 layers of grade A, Super Luminova C1 and BGW9. I've only got one word, bravo. So they've really done well. They've, they've executed well with their loom. They've executed well with the quality of case and machining. The fact that it's got a Salida, the fact that it's got a Faraday cage, the fact that the watch actually fits on smaller wrists because of that effective lug to lug distance. Gee, where are the negatives of the watch? Well, there's plenty and I'll get to those. But before we get to the negatives, I'll show you the bottom crown. It's at the four o'clock, we unscrew it. You get a healthy pop out. We pull it out twice and we can hack that movement. As you can see, we can adjust the time. Lock it in and that movement starts. A single click will allow us to adjust that date. Second, third, and fourth. Again, lock that in. The winding experience is extremely nice with that Salita. And the latch down experience, it's first time, it's buttery smooth, it locks in, and you've got 200 meters of water resistance. My only gripe is the knurling, there is none. It's quite a smooth transition here. I really would have preferred that crown to be here and that crown there because that crown's knurling is wonderful. 
The last thing I want to touch on this watch is that sapphire crystal. And the crystal is flat and it features six layers of AR. And in the real world, I tell you what, it shows. They've done a really good job with the coatings on that crystal and the management of reflections. Now you're probably asking, how much does this cost? What's the price of this watch? Well, it's expected to be released mid-November and they're gonna have a launch promotion. So I'm gonna leave all the links in the description so you guys can check that out. I'm pretty stoked, I'm pretty impressed with what I've got in the hand. It hasn't disappointed in the area of quality. But in saying that, moving on to the negatives of this watch, if you look at that date window at the six o'clock, it's nicely framed. However, it is a little bit deep and it can be a little bit of a struggle in certain lighting situations looking at that date and getting a legible read. Second negative is that minute hand. If you notice, there's a minute track on the inside and that follows the second hand as well as the hour hand, but the minute hand does not have a minute track. And it would have been great to have a minute track, a secondary one, get a more legible gauge on time. But in saying that, because the actual hand is skeletonized, if you look underneath the arrow at the base, you can see those markers, but you have to look on an angle. You, do you really wanna be doing that? Not necessarily. And speaking of the skeletonized handset, for me personally, I would have preferred if that actually loomed the handset themselves, the frame. The frame leading from the central pinion all the way up, at least that way you can get a gauge of where the handset is to show you where the structure of that hand is in dim lighting. Next negative is those crowns. I love that one. I think that's fantastic and I think that should have been here because the, the knurling on this is wonderful. There's no knurling on this, it's smooth and this is probably the crown you're gonna be using most, obviously setting the time, the date, and it's too smooth. This one here is fantastic. So potentially they could have had two crowns exactly the same. I know they've done a stylistic choice here. That should have been here, that should have been there. That's my take. And the last two points I wanna to touch on is that strap. Be aware that if you wanna do strap changes, the watch will take curved spring bars. They do supply it with the actual watch. It's a very good quality spring bar. However, there's not a lot of gap in there. So if you're planning on putting different types of straps in here, you might be limited. Although they do supply a fantastic rubber one, as you can see, and an excellent leather one. So bear that in mind. And my final negative of the watch is the external bezel. I like it, I really do, but there's no function. It doesn't move, it doesn't turn. Could have been used for a second function somehow. You guys give me your ideas of what you think. Because overall, I think the finishing, the styling, the case, very well done. The mechanism, the footprint, the quality of that rubber, the quality of the leather, the quality of the case machining, it's executed to a very good level. So the positives of this watch, well, you've got a Salida SW200, fantastic build quality, excellent loom, really top-notch anti-reflective coating on that crystal. Again, well done. Great rubber strap, great leather strap. The fact that you've got a Faraday cage and it's a well-finished machined screw down Faraday cage, it's not just something thrown in there. Again, that's gonna offer good protection against magnetism. An interesting watch and I wanted to get this on the channel to have a look at it, to have hands on. Hit me up in the comments, guys. Let me know what you think about this. It's the Phoebus Vortex Anti-Magnetic 200 meter automatic. Very functional, could have been a little bit more functional with a couple of tweaks, but overall a very well finished watch. And being the geek that I am, very pleasurable on the wrist. Hit me up in the comments guys, thanks again for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.